In this lecture, we'll have a quick look at sample mean. So, if I've got data from a sample, I've got data x1, x2, up to xn data points. The sample mean or the sample average is just the usual average. I just add all the numbers and divide them by the number of observations. If I write this in our summation notation, this sum from 1 to n of x size is this top part here. That's the summation. And there is 1 upon n over there. So if I look at this and if I take the n across to the other side, n x bar, then on the right hand side I've got the sum of the x so on the left hand side I've got the sum of the x size of the, the sum of the numbers, the total of the numbers is n x bar. So this is just the total of the numbers. Now this might seem a bit odd, but it's not really. Uh, if uh, if I have say the numbers one, two, and three, so the mean here is equal to two. If I distribute the data differently and say, all right, I'll I'll give everybody here. If I would say three people with a dollar here, and two dollars and three dollars, I say divide this in and give give you each of the average of the data, of the average of, of how much you've got then each of you will have two dollars. So all, all I've done is taken the same amount of money and redistributed this so everybody has the mean. So the total of the amount of money you have here is six dollars. And because I've still got the same amount of money over here, this total is six dollars still. In other words, all I'm saying is, if I replace every observation by the mean, as I have over here, the total is the same as I had before. That's what this means here. If I turn this result around, I've got sum of the x size minus nx bar is equal to zero. So the total over here and the total over here, I subtract them, I get zero. I can rewrite this in this sense over here. That if I've got x minus x bar, and I sum those, I get zero. In other words, what I'm doing over here is saying, okay, what I'll do is I'll subtract the mean in this case. So if I subtract the mean here, in this case here, 1 minus 2 is negative 1, 2 minus 2 is 0, and 3 minus 2 is going to be 1. If I add these up, I'll get 0, because all I'm doing is taking the total from here, yeah, and the total from here, and subtracting them. The other result we'll look at is, if I do this same subtraction as before, but square it, now the negatives don't cancel off anymore with the positives. The square rate, what to say, this is the same as squaring the data and then adding them all up, minus nx bar. So the proofs of these things are again here. I will not look at these. I will leave this for you to look at. And again, you can ask the intuits. I will look at this one very briefly, the second one. So sum of x minus x bar squares. The thing you do here is multiply these out. So square means multiplying this thing with itself. And the way I'll square it, this is going to be this x tie here, the first term here, times the whole bracket, then the minus in the middle, the x bar times the second term there. So I've taken the x i from here, yeah, x i times the full bracket, and then the x bar times the full bracket. And now what I'll do is I'll break this up. So it's x i times x i is x i squared, and x i times x bar is x i times x bar. In the second one, I've taken this as a separate sum now, so this thing is a separate sum, which I can use do using my rules from before. And then the x bar is a constant, so I can take it outside the summation, and I've got in the summation x i minus x bar. Now, this from my previous result is going to be zero, this is the years. If I look at this, this is x i squared, and again I've broken the sum up, this is x bar times sum of x i's. And I know the sum of x i is the total of the data, and that's just n x bar. So this is n x bar times x bar gives me n x bar squared. And so my result follows from there. Again, have a look at this. If it doesn't make sense, ask a tutor afterwards or ask somebody in, in the lectures. The next thing I'll look at is sample variance and samples in the deviation.